Hey everyone, Brandon Lee here with Virtualization How To. And since I've moved my home lab to mostly mini PCs, I definitely keep my eyes open for great configurations and offerings that make sense for home lab workloads. Mini X has long been known for its lineup of compact mini PC form factor machines with a great power to weight ratio, if you will, in terms of performance and footprint. Today we're taking a look at the new Mini X Elite EU715-AI. It's packaged as a sleek little system that feels premium and ready for serious work in the home lab or other use cases. Mini-X did send over this review unit for me to test, but as always, my thoughts and opinions are my own. Now, let's start with the build of the Mini-X EU715-AI. Right out of the box, this system arrives in premium packaging that feels very high quality, and I really like the build quality of this machine. Uh, the build quality itself is very solid. It has the matte black finish that blends in with the rest of your home lab gear. You can even mount it behind a monitor if you want using the included Visa mount if you prefer that setup. In hand, it feels like a solid chunk of hardware, so it doesn't feel flimsy or lightweight or have that really plasticky feel. It has a very substantial fit and finish to the unit. Now let's move into the hardware configuration as I think this is what's most interesting to most. The EU715-AI that I received is powered by the Intel Core Ultra 7 155H processor. Now this processor is one of the latest Meteor Lake laptop chips. This CPU features Intel's hybrid big little architecture with a performance and efficiency cores. And this particular processor combines six performance cores with 12 threads and then it has 10 efficiency cores with a single thread per efficiency core so a total of 10 threads on that side of things so if you're keeping count that's 16 cores and 22 threads it also integrates intel arc graphics and it has an intel npu for ai boost now on paper this makes it a versatile chip capable of uh, many types of workloads if you're running creative tasks or even ai assisted workflow uh, Microsoft's Copilot, for example, can offload tasks to MPUs and systems like this. However, those of you that have read my blog posts, you know I'm a little bit of a pessimist about MPUs in many PCs, and just simply for the fact that MPUs these days just aren't used or utilized by many of the AI programs and applications and software that many of us use in the home lab like LM Studio or Olama. So the NPU sits there not being utilized. And I think many of the companies toss around the NPU as kind of a marketing point that helps to sell many PCs. Now I'm not knocking many X, they're simply just doing what many of the other manufacturers are doing by including these NPU units. But do keep that in mind, while they look not on paper, there is still a lot to be desired with support for modern NPUs. Now, in terms of memory and storage, this little machine really shines, I believe, in these areas. Officially, it supports up to 96 gigs of DDR5 5600 memory, but like many other dual-channel DDR5 systems, I have no doubt that it likely supports the new 64 gigabyte SODEMs just fine from Crucial. So the 100 and 28 gig kits that you can now buy. I don't have one available currently, but I would assume that it will certainly support that. But just know officially that support is noted at 96 gigs of memory. For storage, note that you get dual PCIe 4.0 M.2 slots that are X4 slots, which is one of my favorite features here. And this allows you to split workloads, dedicate one drive to your hypervisor install, and another to virtual machines, all with the PCIe 4.0 performance. Now, for the creators and creative side of things out there, on the display side, you get covered with Thunderbolt 4, DisplayPort, HDMI, and USB-C options. So with this mix of connectivity for display, you can run up to four 4K displays at 60 hertz or a single 8K display if you want to push things a bit further. Networking is another strength of the EU715 AI. You get dual 2.5 gig Ethernet ports. 
and that gives you a combined five gigs per second of bandwidth on the network connectivity side. And I really like that since you can use the dual adapters to separate out traffic types or workloads. It also though has wireless connectivity, including Wi-Fi 6E, as well as a future ready Wi-Fi 7 support. The network adapters also to note are Realtek based RTL 8125s, which means that you won't get native VMware ESXi support, but Proxmox runs this just fine. And given how many home labbers are moving towards Proxmox and don't really care as much about VMware these days, I don't think that is going to be a deal breaker for most. Connectivity and expansion options are also very strong. With Thunderbolt 4 and 40 gigs per second, multiple USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports, as well as USB C 3.2 Gen 2x2 port, which is rated at 20 gigabits, you can easily hook up external storage storage, docking stations, or even something like an eGPU if you want to boost graphics power. Now on the front panel, you get the power button, the clear CMOS button, a combo audio jack, two USB 3.2 ports, and a Thunderbolt 4.0 port. Now on the back side is your power jack, a Kensington lock, the two 2.5 gig LAN ports, HDMI, display port, USB-C with input and output support, and an additional USB 3.2 Gen to port. Now the unboxing experience was also well thought out with everything packaged neatly as I mentioned before. Now accessing the internals of this mini PC requires removing four screws on the bottom panel. Now this is pretty typical however I wish Mini X as well as many of the other companies out there would adopt some kind of toolless design for this. It always gets a little bit tedious to have to remove the screws, remove the rubber feet on the screws, keep up with the screws, reinsert the screws when you put the the back panel back on. So just a note there, that is a little bit cumbersome, but not out of line with what most are doing. Now, another nice touch with this, I think is the power adapter, which is small and lightweight. It's not like a massive brick that many of the other mini PCs will have. And it also looks very much like a phone adapter. So you've got the USB-C connection that plugs into the Mini X unit. And then you have, of course, the block that you plug into the wall. Now, since this is marketed as an AI-ready device, let's touch on those capabilities. The Intel NPU is there and working, but again, adoption is limited for the kinds of AI workloads that I think most home ladders are interested in. Still, you can run tools like LM Studio and achieve acceptance performance. I, I know I just did some quick testing in Windows 11 with Gemma 3N E4B model, and I measured around 14 tokens per second, which is solid for light AI experimentation. Now for home lab use, I really like the potential here of this Mini X unit. Even with the Realtek Nix, Proxmox handles this system uh, extremely well, including the hybrid CPU architecture, thanks to uh, the latest Linux kernel and CPU microcode in Proxmox 9. Now with 22 threads to work with, you have plenty of compute to run virtual machines or containers. And again, the dual NVMe M.2 slots and dual two and a half gig network also means that you can separate out things like cluster traffic from storage traffic and from your virtual machine traffic, which I think is a huge plus with this unit thinking about the home lab use case. Now, what about thermals and efficiency? These were very strong with the Mini X unit as well. In fact, under idle, I measured around 20 to 25 watts running Windows and just doing some normal Windowsy tasks that we all do. Uh, clicking around various windows, opening some programs, 20 to 25 watts. Now under full CPU load, which I was able to achieve with the Linux stress utility as well as the STUI utility that I like to load in Proxmox, it topped out at just 69 watts. Now I think that's really impressive for a system with this many cores and compute power, and it stayed surprisingly quiet even under load. Now I think units like this are really great for home labs that are on 24 by 7 by 365, and you wanna make sure that it is a low power home lab, at least for the workloads you're running. Now as for price, the EU 715 AI currently sells for $899 directly from Mini X. Now, on the website currently, there is a $99 discount, which is available. This makes it more expensive, I realize, than some of the other mini PCs out there. But I do think you are getting a very solid mini 
gaming PC, lots of compute power, lots of connectivity, and a modern CPU architecture, that is a low power footprint. And if you're thinking about running a home lab 24 by 7 by 365, this actually equates to money back into your pocket with those efficient cores that you have working and running your workloads. So who should buy this? Well, if you want a low power home lab node or even multiple nodes for a cluster, if you're doing something like a, a Proxmox cluster, a Kubernetes cluster, the EU 715 AI, I think, makes sense. And if you need support for larger memory configurations, the 128 gig memory thrown in this unit would be very appealing. I think that would be a great option. It also is great for quiet operation, low heat, dual networking, dual NVMe slots, and all of those things, I think, definitely tick the right boxes when it comes to home lab. Now, to wrap up, the Mini X Elite EU715 AI is a powerful mini PC that balances performance, efficiency, and connectivity in a very capable package. I really like this little unit. It's more than fast enough for things like productivity tasks. If you're wanting to leave the Windows 11 Pro that actually comes installed, you could run client Hyper-V on the workstation and kind of have it as a dual purpose productivity as well as home lab node that you can spin up containers and uh, Docker desktop. You could run something like VMware Workstation or Client Hyper-V. Once again, I think all of those use cases make a lot of sense. However, you can also take out the factory installed Windows 11 Pro, throw in your own M.2 drive and go from there. Install something like Proxmox or some other hypervisor that you want to play around with. So lots of options here that this box does give you. How about you? Do you like the Mini X Elite EU715 AI Mini PC? Is this a mini PC that you would actually be interested in for a low power home lab node? If you like this video, please do like and subscribe and also hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos as they are released on this channel. Well, do stay safe out there, keep on home labbing, and I will see you in the next video.